Hello, I'm Dermot Manahan and welcome to the Sky News Daily Podcast. So I'm just putting up a price graph now of Bitcoin. I've got a five-year price graph and in five years, Bitcoin has gone up apparently 12,085%. And I checked this morning the total value of all the Bitcoin in existence. And apparently it's worth at this point just under one trillion dollars, which is about $120 for every single human in the, on the planet. Um, it, the price rise has been phenomenal, um, unbelievable. And especially in the last year, I think, let me see, what's it done in the last year? It's gone up over 500%. Gary Stevenson is an economist with a knack for breaking down the complicated. Okay, so first of all, there are many, many different cryptocurrencies. Uh, the most famous of all is Bitcoin. Um, they all come down basically to the same thing, which is um, the idea is it's a completely online currency. Um, so transactions are completely managed online. Theoretically, there's no one else in control of these, these cryptocurrencies. So normal money, um, you have to go through the banking system. You have to go through the central banking system of the Bank of England. Whereas these cryptocurrencies, they're all online. The problem is they often don't work very well as currencies in the sense that you normally can't use Bitcoin or crypto to pay your bills or to go shopping at the supermarket or to pay your taxes, uh, which sort of raises the question, are they currencies at all? Um, certain people on the internet will passionately tell you that they are, but in reality at the moment, you can't really use them for most of your financial transactions or your day-to-day -day transactions. So I think what they have become, especially in the last couple of years, uh, really is speculative investments. I think most people buying these cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, especially in the last year, have been doing it largely rather than with the intention of using them as currencies, rather to buy them and hold them and hope that the price appreciates. So you think it's turned just into speculation that you know people have been doing for years on, I mean, used to be physical commodities, now it's a virtual one. Personally, that is my stance. Uh, I know a lot of people will get very angry at me on the internet after saying that. Just because we're moving online, that doesn't mean we're going to move towards a cryptocurrency system. So in my personal opinion, I don't think we are moving towards a world where most transactions are done in cryptocurrency. I think even in a very long term horizon, that's not going to happen. Um, but obviously, some people, many, many people, clearly, if you look at the price of Bitcoin recently, um, many people believe that we will go that way. I think it's a speculative bubble. OK, but well, just tell me more about how it all works then. And this issue of mining Bitcoin, what is that? OK, so uh, th there's various different cryptocurrencies. Let's stick to Bitcoin because it's by yeah. far the biggest and the most well known. So one of the big appeals of Bitcoin is the idea that supply is theoretically limited. And I think we need to understand this in the context of what's been happening in the real monetary system, the real world monetary system over the last 10 years, and especially the last one year, which is in response to the coronavirus crisis, uh, governments and central banks have together printed and injected into the economy an enormous amount of new money. So in this country, in the UK, it's about 10,000 pounds per adult. They've injected a huge amount of money in, and this has meant that a lot of people are worried, okay, all of this new money coming into the system is gonna push prices up, it's gonna devalue my currency. So they're looking for an investment that has a limited supply. So this is one of the big appeals of Bitcoin and crypto. The idea is you can only make new Bitcoin by mining it, which is um, in reality getting a computer to do some complicated cryptographic mathematics. And the more Bitcoin that gets made, the more difficult it becomes to make more Bitcoin, which means in the long run, it basically becomes impossible or virtually impossible to make more Bitcoin. What this means is Bitcoin has a limited supply, and that's one of the reasons why people love it on the internet because they say real money, the central banks are putting loads of it, but Bitcoin has limited supply. One of the problems which you might ask me is this has some environmental issues, which perhaps you're going to get onto. Well, well, okay, well, let's, let's do that now because if all these computers have to work harder and harder to mine less and less Bitcoin, then energy consumption just goes up and up and up. Yeah, so uh, basically the process of mining, it's essentially using electricity. The computing power is there. It, you're converting electricity essentially into Bitcoin. Um, when Bitcoin was very cheap, and it used to be much, much cheaper than it is now, I think it's, uh, you know, you don't have to go that long back ago and it was 10 times cheaper. Um, 
it became inefficient to make new Bitcoins once electricity reached a certain price. But as the price of Bitcoin goes up and up and up, suddenly it becomes extremely profitable to create Bitcoin, no matter how expensive the electricity is. And what this means is it becomes profitable to pour huge amounts of electricity at the moment into the creation of new Bitcoin. And I think I saw the other day that it was something like, if you list all of the countries in the world of how much electricity they use, Bitcoin was, I think, 14th or 15th, which tells you, I think, just above Argentina. That's how much electricity Bitcoin uses at the moment. And um, this problem will only get worse if the price continues to increase and the price is increasing at a phenomenal pace. Um, as Bitcoin gets more and more expensive, it makes more and more financial sense for people to use more electricity to make more Bitcoin. So um, it's, you know, the idea that one single currency can be using as much electricity as the whole of Argentina basically tells you that we do have an environmental problem on our hands. The stats that Gary's referring to there come from the University of Cambridge Centre for Alternative Finance. At 127 terawatt hours per year, Bitcoin did indeed surpass the energy consumption of countries like Argentina and Norway in 2019. To put that slightly differently, it would take the UK 28 years of kettle boiling to use the same amount of energy Bitcoin used in just one. And let's talk about the prices. As you say, it was an awful lot cheaper not very long ago. But we keep hearing stories, and this no doubt is one of its attractions, of people putting in, well, a few hundred dollars or a few hundred pounds and becoming millionaires. The truth is, people love to buy a thing that has the chance of doubling. And there are plenty of people who bought Bitcoin in the last year and doubled their money. Um, but that doesn't mean it's a wise investment. You know, there are plenty of people who've doubled their money by going into a casino and putting it on black. Um, but this is the way speculative bubble works. You know, people like to buy things that have gone up a lot, which means that when something goes up a lot, more buyers come, which means it goes up more, which means more buyers come, which means it goes up more. Um, these usually end in only one way. You know, last time you called me on was GameStop. That was a very similar situation. I predicted a crash. We saw a crash. Um, I think these cryptocurrencies will crash at one point, but um, I wouldn't like to tell you exactly when and how high from. But uh, I would just like to say to people out there who are thinking about getting involved, can you double your money? Possibly yes, but you also can definitely lose all your money. So please, people watching, don't risk any more money on Bitcoin than you can afford to lose all of. And is there another way that um, cryptocurrencies in general could go in that they just become normalized? You, you can buy them out of cash machines and use them to, to go about your daily business. They, they just become a, another international currency. And the advantage of that, of course, is that then there are no exchange rates. Uh, listen, it's not impossible. It's definitely not impossible. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to do any transactions with Bitcoin. I think you'll find that uh, it's not very easy to do. At the moment, it's not easy to do transactions with Bitcoins and it can be expensive. Um, but of course, if it became much more widely used, it could become cheaper. So the problem with this, you know, if I can talk a little bit, get into the economics history of the history of money, I used to be a money trader. Um, before we had the current monetary system and the current monetary system, the money is not backed by anything. It's just created by the central bank and they promise to limit the supply to try and control inflation. Before that, we had the gold money system, which in effect was roughly a limited supply system similar to the Bitcoin system. And we actually found that there were a lot of problems with that system where you have a limited money supply. For example, if suddenly there's a big increase in the demand for money, you can't increase the supply for money and people who have debts can become bankrupted. We can have massive deflation. And this was actually one of the big causes behind the Great Depression. And for me, I actually think the reason why the 2008 Great Recession was not as bad as the Great Depression was because central banks were able to pump a lot more money in the system. And, you know, this last year in COVID, central banks have pumped huge amounts of money into the system. And that is the entire reason why governments have been able to pay for, for example, the furlough scheme. If we were under a Bitcoin system, that would have been totally impossible. So I think we have to be aware that, you know, we've tried fixed money systems in the past under the gold system, and they have big problems. Now, that's not to say that the current monetary system doesn't have problems. You know, one of the most obvious problems is that we keep seeing house prices go up and up, stock prices go up and up, and that causes big increases in equality. But I don't think going to a Bitcoin system where we basically take away the power of governments and central banks to do things like the furlough scheme, I don't think that's going to help. I think that's actually going to cause more harm than good in the long run. The richest in our society are making billions off of COVID-19. That is going to keep our economy in a crisis for decades. How many times can you get paid 
a load of money for betting the world's going to be terrible forever.